There's no chance that the markets can sustain more of these losses. It's simply not able to deal with this level of punishment. Stocks have been highly erratic in 2018, which has clearly been demonstrated in October and November. Stock buybacks were supposed to rescue the market in November, but I guess either the money ran out or the panic selling is more powerful than the share repurchases this time around. This could be another interesting week. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at various economic indicators. I want to tell you what is going on right now, today, and let's begin by taking a look at this chart. It's a series of three charts, in fact, from the lion's share. NASDAQ 100 testing post 2009 up trend line again. The last time this happened was in 2016. Now, it's not important necessarily that this could potentially go below that trend line and this is going to set a trigger event that's going to destroy the Nasdaq and it will never be the same again. No, that's not the way it works. But what could very well happen is that if it goes below there and is able to stay there for a little while, that's going to trigger a lot of these computer algorithms that may start to see the Nasdaq as a good opportunity to sell and wait for a position in the future, but that may not come for a little while. Look at the NASDAQ, what happened after the year 2000. I think it took something like 14 years to get to its previous high. It's unbelievable, but anyway, this happens to be the NASDAQ, and I'm not pointing fingers at any one particular thing, because when you look at 2018 as a whole, it did terribly. This particular market is just the same as the S&P and the Dow Jones for the most part when you look at it in 2018. In January, everything fell. In October, everything fell. All these markets tend to move together when the panic selling sets in. This happens to be Deutsche Bank, one stock that is something I talk about on a fairly consistent basis. I do believe that what's happening with Deutsche Bank will be extremely relevant at some point in the near future. And by that, I mean it's going to come to the front page news. Right now, it's in the background, but eventually that's going to be something that people are actually paying attention to, so we'll see about that. Deutsche Bank testing trend line of lower lows. So according to this trend line, you can see Deutsche Bank actually falling lower and lower and lower into nothingness. So we'll see how long that takes. MSCI Emerging Markets Index testing broken decade long down trend line again. The emerging markets are something that I was covering all throughout this period, this slump that they were experiencing in 2018, trying to point out the fact that if emerging markets are suffering, this could very well create a domino effect and it could spread around the rest of the world. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that if you have a problem in a particular particular emerging market that's guaranteed to create a problem in a developed nation, let's say. That's not the way it works, but you do have issues with malinvestment today, with currency that can't find a good home, and you start to have panic that sets in. You have too much control, too much power in the hands of computer algorithms, and there's no possible way that that could ever be a good thing when the selling starts to take place. So let's look at this here. What exactly has done well in 2018? And I'm not talking about particular stocks, of course, but the asset classes. Total returns of various asset classes between January 29th and December 5th 2018. So looking around, it's not good. It really isn't. Any of these look terrible. And the only one that was slightly positive is US cash. You usually find that in a recession. But I keep listening. I keep reading. I got my eyes open, took my sunglasses off. I got the earplugs out of my ear. And yet still, no mention of a recession. Economy's doing great. So what's all this? What is it about San Francisco's housing prices that have come down by $260,000 from their peak? What about the building up of inventories in real estate? What about all of the criminal activity that's taking place right now with derivatives? 
What about the shadow banking industry that's gone haywire? What about all the cover-up that's taking place in all of these financial institutions that comes to light all the time, they get a slap on the wrist. Nothing is being done to ensure that the next crisis isn't even more magnified than the last. We're in for a real treat, and that is not in a good way. And last but not least, I wanted to just show you this more as a prop but China has been reducing their lending restrictions. You can see all of the green dots here are loosening measures. There are a couple red dots, very few, and yet the green dots are there over and over and over again. And that means that they are becoming more and more relaxed, trying to ensure that this market that they have continues to be accommodated and that's when you know you've become desperate they've done this by the way this chart goes back from September 2017 up until November 2018 and you could just see over and over and over again as the markets became worse and worse as things started to accelerate you saw China doing this over and over again I've been talking about it I've shown you a couple examples but this is really really good because it actually shows you when they did what they did, how they did it, and so on. So it really breaks that all down for you. I know that I've you've heard me talk about it. So this is something that I thought would be very good to see. It gives us an idea because China's markets this year have not done well. It's been really bad to say the least. And that has been at the same time where they've been trying to make it easier and easier and easier. They use their national team to buy up stocks. The government, I'm not mistaken, I believe I read this for you, that the last numbers we have, they are buying up 24% of all the new homes. 24%. That tells us something. The most massive public works projects that have ever been in all of history are taking place right now in China. If you found this video informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you're supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that. And last but not least, if you want the financial education you are not taught in school, these two books have it all. You can actually flip through them at Amazon. There's a link in the description of the video. Check it out. If you're more interested in the audiobook, you can get that at themoneygps.com. Did you really think I was taking a day off?